This slightly dumpy beauty is a Robot Royal 36, a rather special 35mm rangefinder camera from the 1950s. It is part of a series of clockwork cameras designed by the watchmaker Heinz Kilfit that began with the Robot 1 in 1934. Obviously all mechanical cameras could be considered as being clockwork. Their mechanical shutters are regulated with cogs and springs after all. But what made Kilfit's design so different is that the film advance was clockwork too, so no film advance crank or knob. Instead the camera is wound using a tab on the base plate, a lot like winding a clockwork toy or musical box. This spring motor automates the film winding mechanism, allowing the shutter to be fired at a sprightly 4 frames a second, which must have been quite the novelty back in the 1950s, the historical equivalent of a motor drive on a modern SLR. Kilfit approached Kodak and Agfa with his design, both of whom turned it down, but he eventually got lucky with Hans Berning of Otto Berning & Co in Dusseldorf, who continued to make these cameras under the Robot Camera Company name right up until the 1970s, the company then moving into producing speed trap cameras and then switching to engineering buttons for fancy fashion houses, which as far as I can tell they still do to this day. The Royal is the most advanced robot and was added to the lineup in the mid 50s. It was made available in three different formats, all of which took standard 35mm film. The Robot Royal 36 that we see here, which takes normal aspect 36 by 24 mil frames, the Robot Royal 24, which takes 24 by 24 mil square format images, and then the very rare Robot Royal 18 that takes half frame images. The 36 and the 24 were also offered with two advancing options, the standard, which we see here, that is essentially semi-auto, advancing one frame with the press of a shutter button, and then the 36S and 24S that could toggle between semi and fully auto using a tab alongside the front royal logo. In fully auto, one press of the shutter could rapidly advance the film at an even sprightlier 6 frames a second. Fully wound, the royal is good for about 12 frames, after which you'll need to remember to wind the film advance again, or risk having your images overlap or double expose. This is an early Royal 36 Model 3, evident from the older shutter speed scale of 1 500th, 1 250th, 1 100th, 1 50th, 1 25th, 1 10th and 1 5th, half a second plus bulb. Unlike Leica's cloth shutters of the same era, it's a metal rotary shutter, which is both extremely reliable and can also be flash synced to any speed, making it excellent for flash photography. The shutter is surprisingly soft and quiet, with the clockwork film advance producing a sound very similar to a modern day digital camera. Speaking of Leica, it is by far the most Leica-like camera I've ever handled. Heavy, solid and superbly engineered. If the Leica 3 was an elegant, refined lady of the manor, then the Royal 36 would be her slightly curvier, racier cousin. The Royal features a rangefinder with a surprisingly long base length, making it very easy to accurately focus. Whilst the combined viewfinder and rangefinder window looks tiny, it is actually surprisingly large and bright when you hold it to your eye. It is an interchangeable lens camera, Mine came with the standard 45mm f2.8 Schneider Krotzner Zenar, but there are some high-end lenses available for the system, including a number of excellent examples from Zeiss. I cannot attest to the quality of the other lenses, but the 45mm Zenar is excellent, producing images that look surprisingly modern, with decent contrast and excellent resolution. If you're interested in exploring the range of lenses, it's worth doing a little homework first, as some will only work on the Royal 24. Make sure you check before you add to basket. The Zenar can be focused using any one of the three focusing tabs protruding from around the lens, which look a little odd, but are perfectly functional. There is also a clever colour dot system behind the aperture ring to represent depth of field. There is a tab underneath the lens that you would assume was for focusing. After all, it's positioned in the area you'd expect to find a focusing tab. But beware! Whilst it looks and feels exactly like a focusing tab, it is in fact the lens lock lever. Slide the lever and the lens will fall off. I found this out the hard way when I first went out shooting. I was standing on a gravel path attempting to focus when the lens decided to take a burton. By some unbelievable luck, the lens landed on the only clump of long grass on the path and was, luckily, totally fine. But it was a real close thing, a couple of inches either way, and there would have been some real nasty damage. This seems like a strange design flaw considering the obviously top-notch design of the rest of the camera. The only other nuisance is loading film. There's a little jiggery pokery when loading and unloading that seems to be unnecessarily contrived, leading to the process taking longer than I would like. In part this is due to an extra step. There is a lightproof film cassette that fits over the film spool, designed to protect the exposed film in the event of the back door accidentally opening. If this extra step becomes cumbersome, then I believe the camera will still function correctly if the film is inserted into the spool only. In some ways this is a good analogy for the Royal 36 in general. It's an incredibly elegant and sophisticated machine, 
but one that feels just a little over-engineered at times. I'm not knocking it though. Small quirks aside, it's a remarkable 35mm film camera that deserves a lot more recognition than it receives. This is no shelf queen, it's a talking point camera for sure, but one that's also capable of producing superb, relatively effortless images. I've no hesitation in recommending the Royal 36 to anyone looking for a top-notch vintage 35mm rangefinder, but especially those that might be considering a Leica M3 or Barnack Leica. It's essentially the same kettle of fish, but in a much more intricate and interesting package.